1 Peter. Chapter number 2. Beginning with the ninth verse. When you have it, please say amen. If you would stand on your feet as we read the word of God, I guarantee you we won't be, you won't be on your feet long. And it simply reads as follows. But you've been chosen. The word of the Lord is blessed. You've been chosen. If you, and for a few moments, as we celebrate, I want to move according with your theme and speak to you from the subject, deliberately progressive, deliberately progressive. And for a theme, if we are going to be a more effective church in the 21st century, Living hope, we must be deliberately progressive and progressive on purpose. Living hope, we've come to celebrate your monumental achievement of another year of service in God's vineyards. And we've come together on today to give God praise for the work he is doing in you and through you. As those who have been chosen, we cannot take the call to serve God and his people lightly. So we thank God for those who have paved the way, like Deacon Paul at battle. We honor God for those who are paving the way. And Dr. Rickenbacker, we have great anticipation from God for those who will pave the way. The songwriter simply says we've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word because he has never failed us yet and he hasn't failed us in 32 years. See, this is a point of rejoicing on today because we have been chosen by a God who orders our steps. In the midst of 32 years, I know you've grown weary but we serve a God that we can lean and depend on. We've had ups, we've had downs, but we've been chosen by a God who redeems and sets us free. Some of us have had issues in our bodies, but we've been selected by a God who is always the answer. And he's always the cure. And we can rejoice on today after 32 years that God has never failed us yet. And due to the fact that he's never failed us, we will not retreat. We will not surrender. And we will not revert back to our old way of being. Because he's been faithful. As we celebrate Deacon John, 32 years of gospel ministry, we know that it's only been done by God's grace 
And however, it's been accomplished, Dr. Rickenbacker, due to you all's determination and sincere faith. See, I understand that it, it hasn't always been easy, but we give God praise for the determination of this great church and the sincere faith to accomplish the work here in Massapequa and all of New York. We give God praise because he has bestowed upon living hope the power to make a difference and the power to make it through. Isn't it good to know that we serve a God that gives us the power to make a difference and, a, and the power to make it through. I know we've, deal, we've dealt with a lot of hardship throughout the years, but we have the power to make it. And the power to make it through. Sometimes ministry brings hostility and adversity. We have the power to make a difference. We got the power to make it through. Sometimes we find ourselves forsaken and all alone in the midst of trying to give God our all. But we can rejoice because we have the power to make a difference and the power to make it through. Weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning. We have the power to make a difference and the power to make it through because great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies. I see all that I needed. The head has provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord unto me. So we can shout with the voice of triumph and we can give God praise and we can celebrate him on today because he's been faithful. He's still faithful. And he will always be faithful. See, living hope, God has blessed you to persevere even through all the storms of life. And you've done it by faith. And not by sight and by persevering. You have continued to hold up the blood-stained banner. You have continued to live and spread the good news. You've continued to draw the sinner and encourage one another even in the midst of difficulty, adversity, and struggle. And all of this has been done. Two, and for the glory of all mighty God. You've been deliberately progressive. The author of this letter is the apostle Peter. Are y'all with me on this morning? And this is confirmed in 1 Peter 1 verse 1 when it states this letter is from Peter. The apostle of Jesus the Christ. By this statement, Mother Wright, Peter makes a declaration that he is an eyewitness to the life, death, resurrection, and power of Jesus Christ. And this has been affirmed by the early church. And the early church fathers that this letter, my brothers and sisters, is genuinely authentic. Peter here is addressing God's chosen people, primarily Gentiles, who are living as foreigners in the Greco-Roman culture, and they were firmly under 
Roman control. But in the midst of that, this, in this first letter, Peter encourages God's people to endure adversity and mistreatment by serving God in all they thought, all they did, and all they said. Living hope in the midst of adversity, continue to serve God. I don't care what they say about you. Continue to serve God. If they mistreat you, continue to serve God. And Peter encourages them to remain faithful in the time of struggle. Because understand that God is our refuge. He is the ultimate source of strength. And he is a very present help when trouble arises. Due to this living hope, as you proceed forward boldly, you ain't got to fear nobody. Isn't it good to know that no matter what life and ministry throws our way, God is in the equation. And there's no need to fear. So you may find yourself on the terrain of life, even in ministry, struggling to figure it all out. But when God is in the equation, there's no need to fear. After 32 years, you may still find struggle in ministry. But guess what? God is still in the equation. And there's no need to fear. And we can rejoice on today because no matter what you've been called, no matter what you've endured, no matter what they've said about you, you still got the victory. Living Hope, I want you to understand. You were made for this. You were built for this. When you talked about, remember, you were made for this. You were built for this. When you're excluded by your colleagues, remember you're made for this. You are built for this. When they don't understand your purpose or why you're here, you were built for this. You were made for this. When the process seems difficult, that leads to your purpose. You were made for this. You were built for this. See, Living Hope, I want to reassure you. As you boldly go into year 33, you've been selected by God for a specific divine purpose. He didn't place you in Massapequa just by chance. But he placed you here in Massapequa, New York to be his people and to serve him in excellence and to serve and love on one another for his glory. For, furthermore, He's chosen you to be royalty. Tell your neighbor, I'm royalty. And you're royalty for his glory. So other people may testify that God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask or think. But not only has he chosen you, not only are you royalty, but you are a holy nation. And you are God's own possession. 
So because of this, it is your mandate, living hope. Say mandate. To declare the praises of him. What does that mean, Dr. Mosley? It is your mandate to know the gospel. It's your mandate to live the gospel. It is your mandate to preach the gospel because you've been chosen. Your royalty, you're a holy nation and you belong to almighty God. So how does a deliberately progressive church move in times of trouble and transition? Number one, a progressive church consistently seeks to think, move, and execute in excellence and in the holiness of God. Number two, a progressive church, listen to me closely, never abandons her mission in the midst of lack, uncertainty, and persecution. And last but not least, A progressive church always responds in love, no matter what, and never seeks retaliation or any form of sinfulness as a way to resolve differences and conflicts. With that all understood, if we desire to be deliberately Progressive, you must embrace God's selection. If you desire to truly be what God called you to be, you must embrace God's selection. If you desire to partake of the greater in God, you must embrace God's selection. If your desire is to walk in the holiness and righteousness of God, you must embrace God's selection. The songwriter says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. No matter what you endure, living hope. Stand firm and grip the solid rock. If you're struggling on today, stand firm and grip the solid rock. In the midst of being discouraged, stand firm and grip the solid rock. As you look forward to year 33, stand firm and grip the solid rock. As God molds you for the next level of service, stand firm and grip the solid rock. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Living hope in the good to know that we serve a God that loves us more than anything is it good to know that we serve a God that's willing to walk with us even in the midst of adversity is it good to know that we serve a God that forgives that sustains and saves is it good to know that we serve a God that is all knowing and willing to aid us just ask the Savior to help you, to comfort, to strengthen, to keep you. Why? Because he's willing. He will carry you through. See, there's no problem. God can't solve. Continue living hope to make the impossible happen. There's no mountain too high. 
There's no valley too low. There's no storm too dark. There's no sorrow too deep. Continue to make the impossible happen. Jesus lets us know he is the way. He is the pathway to righteousness. He is our Lord. He's our King. He's the bread of life. He's living water. He's a burden bearer. He's a bridge over troubled water. He's the pathway to peace. He's the doorway to salvation. He's a wellspring of wisdom. He's our kinsman, redeemer. He's a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, a light in the darkness. Psalm 75 says, God says, I am the one who keeps the foundation firm. In the midst of hard times, trust, God keeps the foundations firm. When you feel rejected, we need to know God keeps the foundation firm. When we feel all alone, God keeps the foundation firm in our loneliness, in times of trouble, in times of weakness, when we feel forsaken, when we're overwhelmed. It's God who keeps the foundation firm. Time is filled with swift transitions. Not of earth unmoved can stand, but build your hopes on things eternal, living hope and hold to God's unchanging hand. As we celebrate this anniversary, I want you to understand that God is a way out of no way. He is the good shepherd and he is the one who makes you have living hope. He's the great I am. You have a living hope. He is a lily of the valley. You have a living hope. He's the wonderful counselor. You have a living hope. He's powerful. You have a living hope. He's the most high. You have a living hope. He's a good teacher. You have a living hope. He's an all-sufficient savior. You have a living hope. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Living hope because he lives. You can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because living hope, you know he holds the future. And life's worth a living just because he lives. So I'm challenging you as you celebrate this accomplishment and celebrate God to be deliberately progressive. And how do you do that? A progressive church consistently, consistently seeks to think, move, and execute in excellence and in the holiness of God. Number two, a progressive church never abandons her mission in the midst of lack, uncertainty, and persecution. A progressive church, last but not least, always responds in love no matter what. It never seeks retaliation or any form of sinfulness as a way to resolve differences and conflict. Tell your neighbor, you've been chosen. Tell your other neighbor, you've been, you've been chosen. Give God some praise and continue to, continue to be deliberately progressive. God bless you.